psychologist and the TV. It's really been a long while and I'm, I am excited to be back on your screens. I hope you're excited to be with us. Now we're going to start to see on a bit of a different but very exciting note. Yes, I'm going to be uploading some lecture videos for my students. As you may or may not know, I lecture in the university. But hey, it's on developmental psychology. Aren't you excited? Yeah, everyone needs to learn psychology. Everyone needs to learn about development. I mean, no one should be left out on this. So if you're new on the Psychologist NDTV, please kindly click on the subscribe button and subscribe to the Psychologist NDTV and also enable notifications so that you can be notified on all of our future videos. You didn't come here by happenstance, as they say. I'm very sure you need to be here and you don't want to miss out on any of our videos because every one of them is going to be really educational. So like I said, it's developmental psychology, biological psychology. And this period, we're going to be dealing with human growth and development. So the first topic we're going to be dealing with today is growth and development itself. The basics, that's definition and then principles of growth and development like I said you don't want to miss out on this we're gonna be going and evolving evolving into more complex uh, principles of development so we're gonna be dealing with um, growth and development pre and postnatal development we're gonna be dealing with a little bit of genetics we're going to talk about cognitive psychology because these are the elements that make up developmental psychology and some bit of uh, psychosocial development as well like I said Please click on that subscribe button right now and become a part of this train. So right on to growth and development. Now what is growth? Growth refers to increase in the size or the height, the weight of an organism over a period of time. Increase in the size of an organism dealing with dimensions like height, you know, weights and other uh, uh, aspects of increase in size over a period of time. Now, growth refers to physical increase that is measurable. It refers to increase in quantity, hence it's measurable, you know. When you measure the height of a child and when the child is two years old, is this tall, and then by the time the child is five, is this tall, that is growth. So it deals with physical increase that is measurable increase in quantity of the organism now uh what's responsible for the growth that we experience is cell division and multiplication we're going to talk about that as we go into details now what about development okay development refers to a change change in the form change in the structure change in the function a change in differentiation and complexity of an organism over time okay now development actually subsumes growth so growth is a part of development but it includes much more change in structure change in the functions because as the cells begin to grow uh, as the cells grow they change in their function some of the cells when they are little they don't function until at some point they begin to function like in the womb of an individual you know, the fetus grows to a certain level before it becomes viable. Fetus viability refers to the ability of certain organs in the baby or in the fetus to function on their own, like the kidneys, like the lungs. And like we said, if the child is delivered at that point, because there's a change in function, the child has uh, the li likelihood of surviving. But if the child is delivered earlier, when the cells are still growing and they're not functioning yet, the child may not survive. This also will be discussed in detail. So we are saying development implies a change, either in the form, in the structure, in differentiation, in complexity of the organism over time. So it's referred to as the systematic change in the structure, function, complexities of the organism over time as they grow and gain or lose abilities. Okay, I'll take that again. Systematic change in the form, structure, function, differentiation, the complexity of organisms as they grow and gain or lose abilities. So we see that growth 
is a part of development, but it takes it much more than that. Cells acquire functions. Cells lose abilities. Now, this uh, principle of losing, gaining or losing abilities is important when we try to begin to differentiate between growth and development. I'll take you through one or two differences. Now, when we talk about growth, we're talking about physical increase, increase in quantity only. But when we talk about development, we're talking about qualitative increase. Now, there may be physical increase as well, but the emphasis is on qualitative increase, okay? Increase in the structure, increase in the function, and the complexity of the cells, yeah. And like we said, while growth is a concept on its own, it is subsumed under development. Now, growth refers to upward increase only, okay? A child grows and most aspects of growth is irreversible. Now, you keep growing. You know, you don't grow tall and then grow short except in unusual circumstances. Now, but for development, it's not always increase. It's sometimes gain and sometimes loss, okay? Like when we lost abilities. For instance, uh, as um, a woman keeps growing, at some point she gains abilities. She develops and she begins to see her menstrual period. That is growth. Now, as she keeps growing again and approaches the age of 45 all the way to 50, she loses that ability. She starts menstruating, that's menarche, and then at about 45, 50, she reaches, she reaches menopause. She loses the ability of uh, menstruating. So that's another development in her growth in her life, you know. So that's, that's some of the differences between growth and development. And we are going to go quickly to principles of growth and development. Now, there are some principles that guide growth and development. And as we study developmental psychology, it's important that we get ourselves acquainted with these principles. Now, the first principle we are going to discuss is the principle of universality. Now, growth is universal. The concept of growth and development is universal. That is to say, everywhere in the universe, cells grow. Everywhere in the universe, organisms grow. Okay, so it's universal. Whether you're born in Nigeria, born anywhere, you will grow. So the concept of growth and development is universal. Now, another thing about growth and development is that growth and development is directional. Growth and development is directional. So it proceeds in a certain direction. Now, there are two directions of growth and development we're going to discuss today. The first one is that growth occurs in the cephalocaudal direction. Cephalocaudal direction. Okay. And the second one is that growth occurs in a proximodistal direction. I'm going to explain these two terms, these two um, ear-breaking terms, okay? Now, when we talk about cephalocaudal direction of growth, we are simply saying that growth commences from the head region and proceeds down to the tail region. I mean, when you, if you remember the drawing of a fish when you were in... Um, secondary school you know you know that the tail side of the fish is the caudal end the caudal fin is at the you know the, the tail end of the fish so when you say growth is cephalocaudal the cephal is the head that means growth proceeds from the direction of the head and then spreads all the way down to the tail region okay uh, for the human beings the leg region if you want to say now if you observe growth in an embryo especially you see that first of all the embryo looks like this you know a big head and then just a tail so the head develops first and then eventually the structures around along the tail region begin to develop so it's from head all the way to the bottom cephalocaudal direction of growth now we also have the proximodistal direction of growth now this simply means that growth begins from the central region here and then spreads to the extremities so there'll be more growth and development in the central region along the spinal cord and all of that before it spreads you know to the extremities you know to the extremities of the organism so that's the directional uh, principle of growth growth is directional now growth is also systematic like we said and orderly so growth follows an orderly pattern growth is sequential it does not proceed randomly so usually if you watch the growth pattern in um, human beings, for, for example, when the baby is born, the baby first 
learns how to sit and after a while as the baby keeps growing baby learns how to crawl and then eventually the baby can stand and then eventually the baby can walk you know so there's a sequence there's a sequence in growth and development it is not disorderly it is not a random process now so that's the principle that growth proceeds in a sequential manner now the third principle is that the third or the fourth principle we're going to be discussing is that growth is predictable now this flows from the principles of universality and sequentiality because growth is universal and growth is sequential it's easy for you to predict you know the level of growth of an individual you can say that okay by between four to six months maybe we should be able to sit between six to nine months maybe we should be able to walk you know so it's predictable you can predict you know the extent of growth and also you know the time of growth of an individual so growth is predictable now there's also the principle of individuality the principle of individual differences now anything that has to do with human beings in as much as you can predict is universal there's also an individuality to it so every individual has its own pace of growth so within the general you know margin of growth there's individuality so uh like we said you say between four to six months so a child and there might also be an exceptional situation a child that may not uh, wait until it's four months old to sit maybe sitting at three months that's the individuality individual differences so when you deal with human beings you always make room for individual differences okay like you know um we will, uh, we will go flow immediately from here to the next step that growth and development is controlled by two major factors okay one is the environment and the other is heredity growth and development is influenced by two major factors one is the environment of the individual and a lot of factors come under the environment of the individual so one is the environment of the individual and the other is heredity also called as maturation and learning maturation referring to heredity or closely related to heredity and learning to the environment so these two major factors uh environment and heredity or maturation and learning they are the ones that control the process of growth and development that's why we talk about individuality because like you know we are all individuals our genetic composition is different based on appearance and what they pass down to us so even though there's a pattern there's an order for growth and development our genetic makeup influences how there's the manifestation of the pre-programmed um, uh, process of growth it's pre-programmed in our genes there's, it manifests based on our genetic makeup so our genes from our parents influences that's why we are all unique because we all have different parents different ancestors so we're going to progress differently in growth and development now we're going to be talking about heredity and environment and maturation and learning in greater details later but for now there are some other principles of growth and development i might mention just in passing for instance growth proceeds from simple to complex growth proceeds from simple to complex so a child will first of all be able to carry out simple actions simple functions before it gets to the complex functions okay so the child first of all when it starts to write it can just draw a circle and make some random strokes here and there but as the child continues to grow and learn the child now can differentiate and write you know uh, more complex things you know the thought process everything proceeds from simple to complex and like we also say from general to specific okay when the child starts to move his hands he first of all can move generally before he can do grasping which is like a specific action so growth growth also and development also proceeds from general to specific now there's the principle of interrelatedness the principle of interrelatedness now this one tells us that different aspects of the growth of the individual are related so your physical growth is related to your cognitive growth it's related to your social growth and this very principle is very important for educationists you call the people in the educational sector because um there's a relationship between the age of the child the growth level of the child and the child's cognitive development and social development and there must be a kind of unison in the growth in these different aspects and that controls what you teach the child that controls the child's progression from class to class now the fact that a child 
probably is um grows very fast and looks bigger than her age or 10 years old uh, does not mean that that child can be in uh, senior secondary for instance because cognitively the child might not be developed enough to handle learning for that level so we must ensure that there's a marriage between the cognitive development the physical development and the psychosocial development before we uh, help children progress from class to class in their educational uh, career yeah so that's very important that's one thing that's been overlooked a lot so these are some of the principles of growth and development and I think because of time, I don't want to make these videos too lengthy so you don't miss out. I'm going to stop here for this video and in the next video, we'll probably discuss maturation and learning and hereditary and environments and how they affect growth and development in, a, in more detail. Now, if you're new here, please click on the subscribe button and subscribe to the Psychologist NG TV. Please don't go without subscribing and also enable notification. So when Okay, just a little and a quick recap. So we talked about growth and development, growth being increase in size and development increase in form, structure, function, complexities of the organism. We mentioned that growth is quantitative while development is qualitative. We also mentioned that um, growth is directly measurable, but uh, development is not always directly measurable. And when we talk about growth, we're talking about increase, you know, gains. But for development, it could be sometimes loss of abilities. And also we talked about a number of principles of growth and development. We talked about universality, we talked about the fact that growth is sequential, we talked about the fact that growth is directional, we talked about the fact that growth proceeds from simple to complex, from general to specific, we talked about the fact that there's individuality in growth, individual differences, and then we talked about um, interrelatedness, that the different aspects of growth are, are interrelated. So much for today, like I said, we'll see you again in the next video and that might be pretty soon. Keep it locked on to the Psychologist NG TV and please don't forget to subscribe. That's quite important to me. Have yourself a beautiful day and uh, thank you for watching and much love from me to you. Bye. Bye.